Welcome to Pure Droids. Where all your dreams and fears come true. Okay, hello and welcome everyone. My name is Peter and today I want to look at what could possibly be inside this mysterious package right here. In fact, I already know what's inside of it. It is something I ordered from jetpens.com. It is called the JetPens Beginner Fountain Pen Sampler. There are five fountain pens in here and I bought this for $18 and so this is pretty cool. We're going to try each one out and uh, see how they work. And I will attempt to form some opinions, opinions about them. What do you say? My guess is that even though JetPen sells this sampler, you can probably get all these pens through many other retailers. This isn't a JetPen's uh, advertisement. Right, here they all are. One, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's just uh, look at these in order, I guess. Here's the Zebra V301, durable stainless steel. I do know that I like Zebra as a brand. Got the whole pack of five for $18, plus shipping and handling and taxes and stuff, I guess. I like this so far. I don't think I've ever had a zebra fountain pen before. I like how this part is metal. This part feels a little bit cheap, this part of the plastic, but it's probably not the end of the world. Once again, these are like entry level. You're not investing a lot into these, so it's okay, I guess. All right, so I've popped one of the cartridges on there. This thread's on there, okay. Let's see if the cap posts. It posts pretty loosely, but I guess you don't need it to really clench on there. A little sketchbook here to practice in. Okay, this is the zebra. How do I get it working? Should I give it a squeeze? Get in there. Start flowing. I had to turn on my air conditioning. Okay, wait. This thing is still not working though. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to get these cartridges to start flowing. I really do s squeeze them pretty hard sometimes, but this one is really firm. Well, maybe I'll put this down uh, and come back to it. Maybe it just needs some time to, to like get in there. I don't know. It's a little bit frustrating, though. Usually you want a pen to just start working. That's the best feeling. All right, let's look at this one. Uh, it's a Petite One Pilot. It is nice and small. Pilot is a Japanese brand, I think. And you can see here, it's about as long as my index finger, which is much smaller than uh, like a regular pen. All right, let's see if this one works any better. Comes with a little cartridge. Uh, hmm. I think I'm supposed to take this yellow part off probably. There we go. That's kind of like a little cap. Pop this onto here. Okay, I can kind of see the ink starting to flow. 
I'm going to pop the back onto here again. I think we'd be able to see the ink start to flow up through this if it was really working, though. I wonder if you can... See, that's pretty nice. You post the lid on the back of this one, and it becomes about about as long as a regular pen would be without a cap on the back. Let me give this a squeeze. Oh, look at that. It's going in there. I think that's what I'm supposed to be doing. I don't really know. Should I be squeezing all this into there? I just want it to work. Okay. Oh, look at that. That's more like it. This is the Pilot Petite one. And uh, it feels good. The flow is good, nice and generous. The ink is, uh, I don't know about the ink. It almost... Maybe this is weird, but it's like not quite as black as I want. I mean, actually, it looks okay. It almost looks like it's a little bit blue, but maybe I'm just being nitpicky or... No. The more I do this, the more it looks okay. I think maybe it was just not very... uh just wasn't flowing as much as I wanted at the beginning, but now it's... I don't know, maybe it's just when I draw these really fast lines that it, the ink's not as dark. That's probably normal, though. But as you can see here, it's working really well. P -p -p Pilot works well. I'll give it like a, I'll give it four stars. I don't really know why. I wouldn't give it five stars, except that I feel like to give it five stars, it would really just have to blow me away in some some way I haven't seen yet. I'm not really being blown away by it, but there aren't any like any big downsides either that I'm seeing. So this seems like it'd be a really nice pen to just kind of, you know, have in your pocket. Perfect pocket pen. Perfect, perfect, perfect pocket pen. Let's see if this one, let's see if this uh, Zebra 301 is working yet. Nope. It could be I'm doing something wrong, but I feel like I'm doing things that most people would do. And I feel like a lot of people would be frustrated with this in the same way I am being frustrated with it right now. So here's your user review. Maybe there's re instructions. Uh, entry level experience, tem temperamental world of fountain pen writing. It's temperamental, all right. I mean, my entry level pen won't even work. Same stainless steel barrel you come to expect from the Zebra 3 series. Drew, I do like the stainless steel barrels they often have. Insert refill until you hear the click. I think I heard the click. Oh, oh wait, it says give a few shakes to start the ink flow. I'm afraid to shake it. I'm gonna put the I'll put the lid on. Oh, there's like a little ball in there. Should have read the instructions. Okay, let's see if it works after shaking it. I gave it more than a few shakes, to be honest. I gave it a, a good deal of shakes. Great number of shakes, actually. And this had just a few shakes. I've done a lot for this pen, and still, it's holding back. I'm I'm moving on. You know, we've got we've got three other pens to look at, and it's not fair to the other three if we use up all our time struggling and wrestling and tussling with an uncooperative pen. And these pens might be totally cooperative and eager and ready to write. All right, so this one is the Platinum Preppy, which I think I might have looked at on this channel before. I'm not 100% sure. Basically what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at all five of these pens and then I think I'm gonna take my favorite one and do a drawing with it. Okay, you can see the little Platinum logo on the nib here. And it says 03, which I guess is the nib width. Here's the cartridge, a little bit different, a little bit longer than the other ones we've seen so far today. 
I'm going to insert it in here. Okay. Just, just like always, these platinum pens always seem like they have very, um, I don't know, I like the quality of the plastic. Like this plastic right here compared to this plastic on the zebra fountain pen. Like I like that the zebra fountain pen has this stainless steel, right? But then even though the stainless steel feels so nice, the plastic feels so cheap. I don't know why. I don't know why. I mean, maybe the plastic isn't cheap at all, but it just feels cheap. And f feelings matter, okay? Um, these pens don't really go together. Okay, so this goes in here. As you can see, I, I inserted the cartridge, and it's already made its way into the grip here. Platinum is another Japanese brand, just like Pilot, the pen we tried out before. Maybe I should squeeze it a little. I can tell it's already flowing, but I could give it a little bit of help. Now this one is, this cartridge is pretty firm, but you can see it. Oh, it's softer in the middle. I don't know if I'm supposed to be squeezing these or not. This one didn't come with instructions. I just want it to work. This one says F03. Okay, so that's the fine. Okay, here we go. It's working. Pla. Tin. Um, I'm writing on top of all the scratches from try trying to get the the zebra to work. It's still working fine. Platinum. Preppy. I should find some virgin paper over here. It's working pretty good. This feels a little bit scratchier than the Pilot Petite one. A little bit scratchier, not in a bad way. I, I personally kind of like that scratchy feeling. Let me, let me try this one next to it. Actually, actually, they feel pretty close. Now that I see this Petite, though, I really like uh, the nibs look similar. But I like the, the shape of this nib. I don't know if I've ever really seen a nib like, I don't know, just the cut. I like the cut of your nibs. Huh? I like that, that cut, that nib on that one. Yeah, so this one feels pretty good. Uh, I don't know if you can tell in this video, but this, this ink in the Platinum Preppy almost seems like it dries to be a shade of gray. I do have a, a habit of putting like filters on the on my videos that make all my ink seem a little bit darker or something. So you might not be able to tell, but this is not a bad pen either. This one is working really well. As you can see, no flow problems. It just works. I mean, maybe there's a little bit of a flow problem. Some of these lines here, like the downstroke of the N here and this, the T there, not too bad. I don't know if it's something I'm doing, but you can see there that like some of these lines are a little bit, a bit more scraggly. These lines are a lot more generous. I'll give it three stars, maybe three and a half. How do I do half a star? But like, something like that. Anyways, it's definitely, it's definitely functional. It draws lines, which is what I want from a pen. It does everything you need it to. All right, next, uh, another pen by Pilot, the Pilot Varsity. Now, this is a pretty popular pen. I've seen this around. This is an all-plastic construction except for the nib. The nib looks very similar to the Pilot Petite. The Petite one is F for fine, and the, this one is M for mild, I assume. This came completely assembled, I think. Yep, it started working right away. No need to pop in a cartridge or take it apart or put it together. Straight out the box. 
pilot varsity it just works Oh, those are nice lines, actually. These lines over here didn't impress me nearly as much as this line right here that I just drew. Maybe it's, maybe it just needed to warm up. Weirdly enough, this seems like a much lower, I mean, they're all pretty, you know, like beginner. You can't even take it apart, right? You can't even replace the cartridge if you wanted to, but somehow I like this pen even better than the Preppy. And the Preppy seems like it's nicer. Like, I feel like I should like the Preppy better. This, the Preppy seems like it's better quality. You know, you can replace the cartridges. The, all this plastic seems nicer. Oh, wait, this is, wait, this is platinum. I should be, I should be comparing it to this. It's pretty, actually, it is pretty comparable to this. Hmm. Hmm. I'm weirdly, weirdly happy with this pen. This for me, I think would be a great pen for just taking uh, on the go and drawing in a sketchbook, right? Because you don't have to worry about it like leaking or, you know, parts of it, you know, like the, because you know, always in the back of my mind, whenever, you know, with fountain pens, I'm always like a little bit nervous about putting them in my bag, in my pocket and stuff like that. Because you're always like, uh, there's like a little thing of ink in here. This part could come out. What if it starts leaking out of here? This, that. Always a little bit nervous, right? But I mean, this is almost a regular pen with just a fountain pen nib on it. So I would probably just get like three or four of them, use one, have the others as backups for when this one runs out of ink, take it with me, draw with it. Look, I'm already drawing with it. You know, if it's a good pen, if I just instinctively start doodling away with it. This might be my favorite one so far, even though it's like. It's the least exciting one to hold and look at to me, but it's the one I've most enjoyed drawing with, somehow. Maybe it's the medium nib. I don't know. All right, we have one more. Zebra gets another chance to redeem itself. Let's see what you can do, Zebra. It's just called Zebra Fountain Pen, I think. Once again, I don't think this one comes apart, just like the Pilot Varsity. Maybe this is Zebra's answer to the Pilot Varsity. Once again, it works right away. Zebra Fountain Pen. You can make your own stripes. I wonder why they call them, why is Zebra the name of their brand? I don't know, it does sound kind of cool, I guess. It's different anyways. They never have anything Zebra related on any of their things. This seems to be working all right. The ink flow is pretty good. Seems comparable to the other pens we've used today. Actually, this is a pretty good contender for me to compare to the Pilot Varsity. Weirdly enough, I feel like the two most basic pens, the ones that are actually like farthest away from your fountain pen experience in that you can't replace any part of it really or refill it at all, uh, are the ones that make me the happiest to draw with today. This one has no indication of what the nib size is, but if I had to guess, I would say maybe Maybe bet somewhere between medium and fine. All right, I think, I think I'm not gonna try to overthink it. I'm just gonna draw a picture with the Pilot Varsity. It's the winner for me. Let's give this, this, uh, this Pilot uh, V301 one final chance to see if it's decided to start working. Nope, it's still not working. I shook it. I inserted the refill until I heard a click. I think I did that. Let me take it out and... Okay, there are definitely clicks that time. Give a few shakes to start the ink flow, it says. 
Here it says zebra pen. <gasps> Look, there are zebra stripes on it. And there's a zebra on the back. Huh, I'm totally oblivious. I'm so dumb. All right, it says though, zebra pen guarantees the performance of this writing instrument. If it fails to perform properly, please return it to Zebra Pen Corps for repair or replacement. Guarantee is void in the event of abuse or physical damage. I mean, how much is this pen? Do you think they would repair it? <laughs> I guess they would probably just replace it, but it's not worth it. Okay, forget it. Pilot Varsity, you're up. I'll put a list in the description of all the pens I tried out today uh, and a link to where I bought this little starter pack. All right? All right, so I've got these five pens in front of me here, and I will try to solidify my opinions. Opinions. That's maybe my new favorite pen pun. I know it's dumb, but I like it. All right, just let me have this. So here are my opinions. Uh, I did start out using this. Pilot Varsity. I was really enjoying it at first, uh, but partway through the drawing, it was kind of starting to struggle, and the lines weren't as juicy, and it just uh, just wasn't as forthcoming as it was at the beginning of the drawing. So I stopped using it, and I switched to the Pilot Petite One. I'm assuming that's how you say it because I don't know. Isn't but doesn't Petite usually have an E on the end of it? Wait, let me look that up. I have a very loud keyboard right now. Petite. Petite. Yeah. It has an E on the end, but this one doesn't. Um, so maybe it's just pronounced Petit one. I don't know. Um, no, it reminds me of the Cuico Sport, you know, because it's small and compact and you put the lid on the back and it gets a little bit longer. Um, and this one worked pretty good. I like it. That might be my new favorite, the, the Pilot Petite one. I'm holding it in my hand right now and... Yeah, I like it. The Platinum Preppy was maybe a close second, uh, but you know, it's it's a few. It's, it just costs a few dollars. You know, it's hard to hard to bash something that you barely invest in. But maybe that's the problem that they now have made like the slightly bigger brother of the Platinum Preppy, which I think I've already reviewed in a different video called the Platinum Prefount, uh, with an E on the end. Prefounte. I'm not sure. Obviously, it's difficult to name fountain pens uh, because they keep on giving them all these weird names that I'm always a little bit sketchy on how to pronounce them. Uh, I, I was really feeling very good about the two disposable pens that came in this pack, the Pilot Varsity and the Zebra Fountain Pen. But I really am conflicted because, yes, they work well, they're functional, you don't have to worry about them, right, because they're disposable. And as you can see in the... First part of this video, I was putting up, up some little price estimates. What I do is I would just, uh, I was just Googling the pen and then, you know, it'd pop up, you know, and I would show, I would, you know, look on jet pens and Goulet pens and Amazon and I would put in like the price ranges of the different place I found it. And for these disposable ones, sometimes it was difficult to even find a place where you could buy a singular pen of these, of these disposable ones where you can't refill it or change out any parts. Um, usually you just buy it in like a two or a four or six or 12 pack or something and it comes with different colors and the inks and stuff and this is great. Like a lot of people um, really do enjoy using pens that way. You just buy them and then when they run out of ink or you lose them or whatever, you just buy more and that's fine. Like I'm not trying to say that's a bad way to use pens, but I also, I also don't want to recommend a disposable pen as someone's first fountain pen because I think like that's the whole cool thing about fountain pens is buying it getting it and then it becomes like you know you start collecting them and it becomes like a member of your family your little pen family right and you and you can you kind of get to know it after a while and then you collect some other pens and then you have like in the back of your head like a little uh you store it away for, you know, like, this pen is good for that. I like this pen for that situations. This pen, maybe I just like looking at or holding. I like other pens for drawing with or writing with. This one's for special occasions. Uh, but I don't know if it's just a pen that is ultimately just going to be reduced to a piece of trash. It's hard to really attach any sort of feelings to it. But maybe it's good for traveling in that case. Maybe it's a good travel pen. You do what you want, but 
yeah. If I was going to recommend any of these pens in this five pack, my first recommendation would probably be the Pilot Petite One. Okay. And it's still pretty cheap. Okay. These are all under $10. Most of them under $5 if you want to just buy one of them. Uh, so you do, I think you'd probably do save money uh, buying the, the pack from Jet Pens, but uh, I don't know. Like, uh, I don't know if I recommend that either because then you get stuck with this, you get stuck with like this Zebra V301 FP, which was a total huge disappointment to me. Like I'll probably throw this one away and uh, uh, long before I throw away these d two disposable ones, it's just, it did not impress me at all. Plus half the fun of having fountain pens is putting different inks in them. And I don't even do that very much, right? I usually just put the same old, uh, like really deep, dark black ink in my pens and um, I still enjoy fountain pens immensely, but s some people have so many different inks. It's like a whole different angle, aspect, dimension of the hobby, which it really is. And you can't even do that. Well, actually, some people on Instagram were saying that they do refill these ones. Okay, I should take that all back because some people were talking about how they pull the nib and the feed out of the, these two pens, right? And uh, but... At first I was like, oh, really? You refill them? But then they're talking about how they like wrap rubber bands around them to like get a, like a better grip around the nib and all this. And it just seems a little excessive uh, for a pen, right? That, I don't know, if you look on Amazon, you can get a seven pack for $16. So, I don't know, personally... I would just either not refill it <laughs> or just buy a better pen that's intended to be refilled. But you do that if you want to, okay? I'm not trying to ink shame you. <laughs> um, also, someone mentioned that the Pilot Petite 1 can be used as a eyedropper pen, which means that you don't have to use a cartridge and then you could just pour the ink straight into like the back part of the pen and just fill that whole area up with ink which would, you know, you can fit quite a bit of ink in there. Actually, looking at this now, it looks like I used up most of the ink in that little cartridge, which was a lot. I didn't even use that pen for the whole drawing, did I? Um, personally, I don't know if I would do that because most of the pens I use as eyedropper pens or like, you know, use the whole back part of the pen as the reservoir. A lot of those come with like little plastic or rubber gaskets to help s seal it in. And uh, I don't know, I'm just always paranoid about ink seeping and spilling and leaking and stuff and this has no gasket but feel free to try it that's just an option that someone mentioned so i thought i'd also uh you know kind of verbally retweet that throw that out there so just know it's a possibility apparently it's thing it's something that people do i did this drawing in a handbook that's the type of sketchbook it is i think it's made by speedball and uh, it worked pretty good i do uh, some variety of drawing type drawings with different mediums in these sketchbooks. I'm pretty happy with them. There was a weird thing where I switched between two pens in this drawing, right? Between the Zebra, uh, no, the Pilot Varsity and the Pilot, the Pilot Petite One. And after I switched to the Pilot Petite One, I assume there's, there's maybe the same ink in both of these. Maybe not though, but on some parts of the paper, it, the Pilot Petite One did seem to be feathering a lot more. That is to say, the lines weren't as crisp, like, you know, I draw a line and you could see like the ink seeping out into the paper. So they're kind of like fuzzy lines, right? And that doesn't really bother me as much. But what was interesting to me is that it would only seem like it would feather on some parts of the paper. So I don't know if it had to do more with the ink or more with maybe inconsistencies in the paper. That was just interesting more than anything. Um, anyways, thanks for... Um, checking out this pen review. Let me know if you have any questions and I hopefully can get around to answering them in the, in the comments. I'm sure there are more things I wanted to say. How have you guys been doing lately? What kind of um, videos do you want? Anything you want to see? Um, a lot of people have been asking for podcasts. I have, um, I don't know. Podcasts are weird for me. I may or, I may, or may not do those. I apologize. Um, every now and then I've been uploading some Minecraft videos. 
on a channel called Peter, 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 if you want to watch those. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're not. Um, also, lately I've been doing this thing where I get tired at night, right? I get tired and then I want to go get ready for bed. So I go get ready for bed. But the whole process that getting ready for bed involves wakes me up again. So then I'm not tired anymore. I'm like tired before getting ready for bed, right? I'm ready to just pass out. But then after getting ready for bed, I'm awake again, right? Because I, you know, whatever getting ready for bed entails, like taking a shower, uh, brushing my teeth, flossing, you know, um, popping, uh, popping a couple pills, maybe, you know, going around the house, making sure all the doors are locked, finding out there's a couple more dishes in the sink, doing those, straightening up a little bit. There's always just a couple of things, you know, picking up a, a pair of pants that was on the floor. Just, there's always like a few things and it ends up being a whole big ordeal, right? Getting ready for bed, uh, you know, refilling my water bottle. Cause I can't go to bed. I literally cannot sleep if I Unless I know there's some water next to me, because I don't know, I just need, I'm, I'm like terrified of waking up sleepy in the middle of the night, but not not having the gumption to get up and go get a drink of water, and then being thirsty the rest of the night. So I need to have water next to me. Anyway, so then there sometimes I try thinking, hey, I'll just you know, it's like a little earlier. I could just get ready for bed now, and then go relax, and then when I'm sleepy, I can just slip into bed and drift off into la la land and that is a pretty good idea i think except there is some magical point where if you get ready for bed too early and then you go relax again at some point you need to get ready for bed again before you go back to bed right like if you wait too many hours, then I will start feeling like I, my, my teeth will start feeling dirty again, or, uh, the house, somehow the house will get like messy again, or I'll still feel like I have to go around and check the doors again or something. Like it just, if I wait too long, if I do it too early, I won't be able to simply walk to bed and fall into it and fall asleep. There's just, I don't know, maybe the secret sweet spot is one hour or two hours. Maybe it just takes some trial and error. I got to check it out. <sighs> Anyways, I don't know why I'm sharing all that with you, but that's, uh, oh, that is just a tough struggle I'm going through right now. Oh, my life's so difficult, isn't it? No, everything's going pretty great for me. I, um, yeah, I, I don't know what else to say, except I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna go get ready for bed now. Maybe about, I'm going to try it, yeah, I'm going to try doing it three hours early and see if that's too early. And then uh, I'll go to bed and then tomorrow I'll start another video. I don't know what it's about going to be about yet. I'm thinking maybe, I don't know, you just have to wait and find out. All right, thanks everyone. Love y'all.